see it's footy and frothies. Dagging and Barney are back. The light's at the end of the tunnel. It's nearly <laughs> summer, Barney. It is almost The summer. season that never ends is nearly over. <laughs> Two, three weeks to go if we throw a bold prediction show in there. But anyway, uh, we know who's in the grand final. Uh, what's happening? Emphatic, emphatically through to the grand final as well. <laughs> the, the two top There's teams for the doubt. entirety of the year. Well, apparently I heard nothing went but about their forward business. passes for, for hours this week. But, it was um, a shocking forward pass. It was fast, <laughs> what do you do? Don't think it cost them the game. Uh, actually going pretty good. How are you, mate? I'm going all right too. Very good. Yeah, Very good. Getting through school holidays now, so doing my best. Yeah, how's that? How's that treat you? So I've next three days are my way, so we'll uh, get a bit of rest and recuperation before the grand final. But um, it's yeah. good. Uh, just to quickly mention that, um, a quick shout out to Jamie, actually, friend of the show who took Elijah out to my young fella out to the Panthers Open saw that. evening and uh, or morning, and he had a great time and met a few of the players and got his photo with Spencer Lenu and Dungo and a few others. So. He had a great day, so thanks, Jamie, for that. I a couple of beers there. But How long did he talk at you before he stopped <laughs> when you got uh, home? He wasn't too bad. He actually went for a walk uh, with Mariah. So, uh, all right. Um, it was all right. Yeah. It was all right. But he was happy. He was a happy boy. So My little one comes home excited. It's a good 45 minutes before she takes a break. Oh, yeah, no, she does that. They do that as well, which is good. Aria does that. Except the funny thing Aria does is you'll be in the middle of a conversation with her in the car yeah. and she'll be talking, so yeah, Dad, so then we went and then we got some chicken nuggets and spotto and then we just, <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just drops it in if she has yellow car. Yeah, yeah and right. then I got to pat all the puppies to spotto and they're really cute. And, <laughs> anyway, that's what she does. Um, cool. I don't well, you can tell we don't have much else to talk about here apart from two games of season's footy. pretty much done. Mm. There's not, not a lot of news floating around and if there is, it's probably pretty inconsequential for a couple of months anyway. Exactly. So... so uh, look, there are a few, couple of re-signings, but off the top of my head, Bryce Cartwright and uh, Rimu Greg both re-signed of Parrot. Cool. Good for them. We're going to review their season shortly. Uh, yeah, not much else going on. Uh, talk about the grand final in the next show. We'll have a comprehensive preview of that. Uh, and we will get into it, I suppose. Yeah, let's, look back at some, <laughs> let's look back at some pretty good performances here. Uh, there were two very good performances, uh, namely from the winners. The first were kicked off uh, in, well, conference it was a word here, 38-4 to four Penrith over the Storm Friday night. How did the stats reflect? Well, these two reviews happened? could almost be exactly the same, just <laughs> change well, out struggled, Penrith for honest, Brisbane. I was struggling to think of what, what more to say apart I from I came that. up with a little bits and pieces here and there, but, yeah, very similar performances from these two top-class teams. Penrith 38, Storm 4, 6 tries to 1, 5 out of 6 conversions, played a missed conversion for the Storm, 2 out of 2 penalty attempts for Penrith, 2 no attempts for the Storm. 87% completion, played 65% from Melbourne, 482-plus run metres and 159-plus post-contact metres for the Penrith side. 8 line breaks to 4, 50 tackle busts for Penrith, 29 for Melbourne, 8 offloads to 7, 3 force dropouts from Penrith, 291 tackles played, 381 you got to make an extra 90 tackles in a game. You're in for a tough night. Eight errors to 13. Four penalties conceded to nine. One ruck infringement to two. And two inside the 10 against the Melbourne side. Uh, very quickly, that I thought this first half played it almost exactly as we thought it might. That mm -hmm. The Melbourne forward packs did aim up. Did they, I, uh, I thought they were probably, probably on top for about 15 minutes. Fifth, but yeah. couldn't come with points. And the minute no. Nelson went off, that was the end of the section. Mm-hmm. To be honest, uh, but they seemed a little nervous for mine, Melbourne. Well, and especially just, their playmakers. The other thing I want to make a point of is that they did strip Penrith probably four times in mm -hmm. that first half and should have nearly scored three or four times. And said they dropped three of them <laughs> or threw it in a touch, or did uh, he did not have a night to remember? No, he did not. Did uh, young um, Marion, but it, but they w were in the contest for that part, but then. Yep. It was just complete suffocation after that. Yeah, they're probably better in the middle of the field. Um, like, Benriff came with the energy. The Both teams came out real real quick for that first 10 or 15 minutes. But the Storm were probably shading them in the middle of the field. Um, and that rotation, as soon as it came in, it was around the 21-minute mark, I think it was, that Nelson came off the field. And it just completely changed. Like, as soon as Penrith injected some of those guys off the bench, they just kept running. Like, <laughs> and Melbourne started going backwards. You can see it in the run metres. There was not a forward that ran over 100 metres for Melbourne Storm. There was only four players in their side that did, and it was a two centres, a winger and a fullback. <laughs> so good luck trying to get over the top of the Penrith side with those kind of outputs from, from, from uh, your forwards. But um, it just seemed like there was an air of um, inevitability about what was going to happen. You know what but I mean? It, even looked, it was funny because even it was mentioned... 
Oh, which is at home. But I think the miss was even mentioned before Melbourne took, walked out on the field. They looked as nervous as I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Uh, and this might sound like a bit of a wank saying it, but it's true that they looked, they just were in the dressing room very quietly, yep. got in a little huddle and quietly walked out the tunnel. It was yeah, it was different look in the eyes, from an, especially from Hughes and Munster. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as soon as the, those changes rung in, it just felt like it was going to be a walkover. Mm. Like, because Penrith really, they, that's, they did what they do. Every 15 minutes or so, they go up a level. And if you can't go with them, which was about, you know, they only had to go up the one level in this game and then they just continued to go. And, yeah, Melbourne were blown off the park, realistically. Um, Melbourne struggled to create opportunities or even cash in. Like, as you said, there was three or four times they did in that first half. But in the second half, I don't think there was one opportunity created out of um, the creative players from the Melbourne side. The only bloke who really looked like creating opportunities was either Harry Grant around the ruck with some, a bit of nice passing with some short balls to a few forwards or um, Justin Ollum just breaking tackles mm-hmm. out there. Like, he was their best outside back by a fair way. Yeah. Whereas Penrith just seemed like every time they touched the ball, they were a threat. Like they, they were constantly challenging both both edges of the ruck um, and the and the far extreme edges as well. With Toto and Taruva just seemed to carve through at different times, and Storm couldn't do anything to stop them. So. Toto was outsta- like absolutely outstanding, uh, and just un- uh, yeah, unstoppable at times. I thought he was he had his best game maybe since his time last year, and he's had some good games at the back end of this year. But I thought he was. Uh, phenomenal, as was Taruva. Didn't have as much Im- impact, but it's a couple of key runs. Uh, he just um, had the same effect. Uh, me- yeah, I mentioned Seve, and I think of Brisbane. That the, the hope Brisbane can take out of this game is that they c- you can score early against them. Mm-hmm. Teams have done it, but you've got to execute. You have to, you can't oh, miss absolutely. your shot. You're going to get two shots. You have to score twelve points mm-hmm. if you're going to beat Penrith this week. Mm. Uh, and Melbourne couldn't do that. Uh, and I th- honestly thought the Mel- Melbourne spine were disappointing after that. I oh, just yeah, think they were completely outclassed and had no one else go with them. They just seemed to get want to get to their set most of the game and yeah. just kick the ball down the other end and yeah. hope that Penrith would make a mistake. There didn't seem to be any sort of um, set-up plays or uh, any constant threat with either passing or even running. There wasn't, you know, Olam seemed like the only bloke who was going to break mm. a tackle. They, I know they've got Kamakamika and Nelson there, but uh, and incidentally... After Nelson's couple of cheap shots, you notice he didn't have a single run yeah. after that. He had no interest in running after that, after he pushed clear over. And I just Lost played, his head just and started that. carrying on. No, he had yeah. six runs in, for the whole game. For the whole and game. They would have all been in that first 15 That first minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. I reckon, yeah. And Kamakamika was strong early as well. And uh, Walsh did a bit of, you know, did a decent enough job, but there's, there was definitely no threat from that forward pack. No. Apart from maybe Katoa. I thought Katoa had, was he was probably their best player on the field, actually, at least yeah. Katoa. He did continue to work and um, sort of broke half, broke a tackle here and there. But, um, yeah, they, they they really were, were – well, as you said, Nelson was a non-factor after he started carrying around and <laughs> carrying on and being an idiot. Um, King had a decent game, as did Welsh and Kamakamika. But, yeah, Katoa was their best. Very good performance for Penrith. I'd like, Cogger and um, – uh, who's the bloke that came from Tigers? Garner weren't really needed, so they didn't get a lot of minutes and there wasn't a lot of involvement from those two. But everybody else in the side, put, you know, at least did what they needed to do. This is one of the Penrith performances where if you gave a point to any single one of them, apart from the two you mentioned, mm-hmm. I wouldn't argue with you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Taruva, Martin and Leota were all good. Fisher, Harris and Sorensen I thought were great. It's probably Fisher's best game again mm. this year. He's had a quite ish year by his standards and they are lofty standards. Yeah, yeah. At least we hold him to that. And I thought he was very impressive. Most destructive, especially in that first half when yeah. it was really it was on the line. On. Yeah. yeah, He was belting blokes. And in defence too. Like you do normally see him, he normally puts one or two shots on, but he was consistently knocking blokes backwards in defence as well, which is um, something you don't see all the time. Yo, I thought was awesome, again, in and around that uh, middle of the field. He, he controlled that. You saw, I, I'm, from mine, Cleary played a bit wider in this game. Yeah. Didn't go into the line as much and let Yo really control that. Uh, what was going to happen in and around the the edges of both rucks? It was either up, it was up to Yo whether they were going to run the ball or if he was just going to dish it on and they were going to go wide. So yeah. I thought he was um, yeah really good there and then Cleary and Toto were their best two players. They yeah. were brilliant. A couple of those Yo runs even late in the game where he just had a, he has that same footwork every time that in the line shuffle a bit left. 
half yes. poke your head through. <laughs> half a step off both feet. His arms all of a free, and all of a sudden he's made another five or ten. Yeah. Uh, late in the game, he was still producing that. I thought he was fantastic. Liam Martin has had an amazing three months. Mm-hmm. I think there's no coincidence that um, Penrith's resurgence, if you can call it that, they're never really in trouble, but the streak they've gone on coincides. Their attack's really money. picked up, though, since, since the back of Origin. He's yeah, been yeah. absolutely fantastic. Uh, Mitch Kenny probably doesn't get enough reps, but he has mm-hmm. been where, where he stood Solid last ice, year. Yeah. He um, well, 40 tackles again. But oh, his brilliant his in service defense. was yeah. very, very good in this game. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we lamented that a little bit, but it does help they shorten it up a little bit for him. Like yeah, you yeah. don't see him throwing the big, uh, the big bullet passes that a yeah. lot of the halves do throw. But um, they play to their strengths. They, it's obviously you know they work around the, what, what they've got in their team and they do it better than anybody else realistically. Yeah. So. Uh, and yeah, Edwards was great in that sort of the last twenty minutes. Came into his yeah, own. A sniffing bit well. around, causing problems. Mm-hmm. They're like really just, good with that backup play. Just what a what a, a fantastic team to watch. Um, hard team to analyse sometimes, but uh, <laughs> I'll go. If you, I'll, so I'll go three two o oh, two Cleary. Or you go another. I had it the other way around, but Fair I'm enough. happy to go with two o. Oh. Fair enough. And one to Yo. Yep, hundred um, percent. But are there any more takeaways? Oh, we sort of whirlwinded through that game, but probably gets more back towards some. Um, um, I just want to mention Jerome Lowe was good. Uh, yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah absolutely. Him, but Luai is as Luai does, and Luai mm. did Luai. In we this drew, game. drew in a lot of defence. Yeah. Like he, did. Well, he created uh, that probably two tries. Like mm-hmm. had an impact in two tries. Yeah, yeah. Um, where he ran back through the middle and uh, changes direction, up. goes back yeah. the opposite, completely opposite so, way, and drags blokes with him. Um, so you know, we, we have been critical of him at times this year, but I thought he was very good in this game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, can't fault anyone else here. They probably didn't send as much traffic at him as I thought they would have. No, I thought they would have tried to single him out a little bit more. Especially coming back off a shoulder injury, but um, I wonder how much that is conscious Penrith protection and conscious mm, uncon- probably a bit you know, of both. Oh, Storm mm. not really have any ability. Look, end of the day, they seemed a bit lost. They didn't really seem. But to their, have their spine much hasn't of clicked play. since they've all went back. To be honest, no, that's true. I would. Jerome um, Hughes actually seemed better when Munster wasn't yeah. around there for a four week period and, or whatever. And Harry it was. Grant, I know he's you know a fair chance of winning all these gongs, and we gave he ended up in our team of the year. But I don't think he's had a. A great season by his Not standards. compared to last year, no. He, like, he, there was, what, three games he maybe single-handedly won when he you know, had everything go his way. But I don't think he's been on the level of some of these other hookers. No. At their best. Uh, and it, we'll say all this he's with just consistent. That's, but he's you know, a player. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He makes his 40 tackles every week and he's generally involved with one or two of their attacking raids that comes by with points. So. We, we will review the Melbourne season itself next week. Uh, but I think they're probably overachieved. Probably weak after. Maybe. The fact they're a week away from a grand final. Yeah, however, whatever yeah. time works out. Um, they're, to be a week away from the grand final is probably overachieving for what this... Yeah, a little bit flattered. I think there was um, this definite gulf between the teams, the, the top three and the bottom of the eight, those five yeah. teams that all just sort of... You can see from the way the ladder plan p- panned out where anyone from 14th up until 3rd could have pretty much swapped positions in that last two weeks of the comp. I think so. I, I will go as far to say, though, if Roosters had have snuck home last week, <coughs> they put up a better fight than Melbourne did. Quite possibly. I don't say they win, but mm. I think they don't get lapped. They would have created more opportunity, scoring and opportunities. And that's dependent on, you know, if they get Manu Swali back and whoever mm. else, and they're more in the game. I but swear they, their halves would have... Asked a lot more questions. If, I would if the Roosters were full strength against Melbourne, they should have beaten them. They probably should have anyway. And then Melbourne, and then th- I think they would be more resilient mm. in some of that goal line defence. Well, they would have. It's factual. They but both the, the teams that lost this week are, were pretty much running low. What you know, they were scraping through at the end of the That's season. Right. They were yeah. nowhere near their best They're coming into the back end That's of right. the year. So, so um, that's the only thought I had that I would have loved to. Have, it would have been very interested to see how Roosters would have stacked up mm. against Penrith. Just make them think a bit different. Anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. They would have good. scored a couple more tries, I would imagine. Yeah, but. just maybe make them score 30 against 18 or 20 and have a few more moments. But anyway, we get to the other outstanding performance of the weekend and it was the other best team in the comp, Brisbane, who put 42-12 to 12 on the Warriors uh, in a very impressive and physical display. We got what we wanted for a lot of it, uh, but the, the tank was empty at the Warriors. Simple it was the last sort of, what, 15, 20 minutes, they backed that off a little bit and they were nowhere near as physical. But that first hour, they just yeah. belted, 
belted through the front door of the Warriors and they just did it every, pretty much every set. Yeah. They were making massive metres in behind the markers just time and time again. Do you want to knock out some stats and you can keep going? <laughs> yeah, seven tries to three, seven out of seven conversions for the Broncos, three misses for the Warriors. A missed two-point field goal for Reynolds right on half time. 82% completion for the Broncos, 77% for the Warriors. 298 plus running metres and 145 plus post-contact metres for Brisbane. 11 line breaks to four, 48 tackle bus to 31, 23 offloads to 14, one force dropout for Brisbane. 299 tackles played, 324, 10 errors to nine, five penalties conceded from both teams, two ruck infringements to one, and one inside the 10 against the Warriors. And a send-off, uh, not a send-off, a sin bin mm-hmm. uh, for the Warriors. Both teams, again, came out for that first sort of 20-minute period and really ripped into each other, putting in plenty of energy and, um, you know, uh, creating as much as they could. Uh, I thought Brisbane had the better of most of the game, apart from probably a in couple a, of minutes early. In all fairness, early. even when Dallas got that intercept, yeah. Brisbane were all over him. That game was over in the 10-minute market when he scored the 11-minute intercept. Yeah. If, well, he, they, if he doesn't take it, they score, and it's probably more 56 than likely. Yeah. to 6. Well, they got down to... They got down Brisbane's end early with on the back of a penalty and a, an error, which gave them the opportunity, and they managed to you know put up a nice little play to score that first try. Um, Broncos hit back with Walters, who I think probably played the best game I've ever seen yes, him play in first grade. Yeah, he was fucking amazing. <laughs> He's getting out and probing around the ruck, bringing his forwards onto the ball with some really nice passing, and some of the some of his running was dynamic. He was getting in behind and carving them to pieces which just led to quick play the balls and you give quick play the balls to Carrigan and Hass off the back of it and Tommy Flegler and good luck trying to stop the momentum going through the middle of the field. Um, Brisbane did a really good job of doing that, you know, two two or three quick tackles through the middle of the field and then hit the edges. And um, there wasn't a lot of set-up plays. They did play a bit similar to Penrith where it was go to one side. If it doesn't work there, you swing it back straight back to the other side and have another crack down the other side of the field. Um but yeah, just the way they carved through the middle of the field was massive. Uh, against the Warriors team, they couldn't really do much. They put up a, a pretty good effort, but by probably, what, 25-minute mark, they were starting to look like the season has taken a toll on this Warriors team. Yeah. Like they had hands on hips, they were breathing heavy. You, Torhu Harris looked like he was beaten to death after about five minutes of this game <laughs> and continued on to be their best forward on the field by a fair space. Like he was again, he's we've been saying it for weeks now that he's, you know, every second or third tackle he makes, he's grabbing an ankle or a knee or he's back or well, I'm fairly shoulder or his back's completely rooted. He's <laughs> probably gonna go and just lie down for six months <laughs> and then come out and do it again. He'd be next well year, needed, man. but um yeah, he continued just he just kept he just keeps turning up, mate. Every every time he's needed, he's there. Um, but yeah, the momentum from Walters was what really struck me early in this game. He was really controlling that ruck and getting the, getting his big guys through that front door. Um, I think if maybe Pompey lands a couple of those goals early, you might have seen a bit more. The energy last a little bit longer yeah. for the Warriors, just because they might yeah, have been a bit closer. You, it's, like, it's one of those things. But it's when, when you're it's three tries to four at half time. Uh, and you're trying and to you're keep behind that by 12. ball in the air, mm. and the, the ball's going quite flat when you're kicking goals. You can you can get a bit bumped up when you're, mm. you're 12 or six ahead. And it, yeah, well, if they're only four behind going into half time, yeah, probably the energy probably absolutely. does last a little bit longer. Yeah. But um, <laughs> unfortunately, they weren't. I walk over in the second half. As I mentioned, the forwards from the Warriors really started to look um, beaten and tired after a long season. Uh, they were just no match in the middle, and the outside backs really started carving apart. Like Herbie had a field day in that last half an hour of this game. He was just breaking tackles for fun. He was trying to score six or seven tries. <laughs> I think he got close on about five different occasions <laughs> and um, pulled up short, as well as the one that he did score. Um, he was tremendous in this game. I wanted to give, there was four or five blokes I wanted to give the man of the match for in the Broncos for this team. I thought it was a fantastic performance. As I mentioned, the last 15, 20 minutes, the Broncos. Took their foot off as well. They probably could have made this 50 or 60 by the end of the game because they were just carving, they were just breaking the line of the Warriors at will at the end of the game. You've managed to go uh, six minutes into a review of this game and not even mention Reese Walsh. So well done on that. <laughs> it was phenomenal as well. Uh, Reese Lightning, as he was christened by Vossi mm-hmm. a few minutes in, but. Uh, he again had one of those games where he lit the stadium up where he could, they could have scored another four tries. Yeah, absolutely. If everything he tried came off. 
Um, and, I, and I love the fact he's got the balls to keep trying it. Um, yeah, there was two or three errors as well. Obviously, the intercept and two two other times where the pass doesn't go to hand. And there was a kick in good. that end up kick across field. That was a seven tackle set that would have been close to a try. Could have easily like provided another couple of tries. Yeah. Was it three try assists? I think and. Four or five line breaks off his own bat, yeah. plus the line break assists and all the rest of he did Six on the back break of assists, it. Six three try assists, yeah. four tackle busts and a line break. So yeah. not a bad night out for him. Uh, uh, that that one where uh, the try that he's put Walters away for Walters' second try, where he's basically yeah. standing at the back of the line with his hands on his hips. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, shit, the shape's coming out to Reynolds and just explodes onto that ball. Yeah. Oh, Ezra Man might have been a little short ball just out in front of him and he just went through. They didn't. Two blokes both turned, tried to turn inside and get him and they didn't get within a metre off him. I he love, was gone and out I, the I other side. I love those ones where they have the, and they have that every game, but they have that, the, the fox track or did, like the, 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 the spider like, cam. And it follows, them, it follows yeah. the, the angle you don't see yeah. and just see it open up. I, I love those shots. Like. And yeah, the way he just, all he did was straighten and he was yeah. gone and there was not a hand even close to him as yeah. he went through the line and then just positioned Walters perfectly to go in under the post for Walters' second try. Um yeah, he was um, ama he was amazing. He, just, um, he was one that I wanted to give man of the match, and you know, he's in my numbers, but I d he didn't get the three. And ultimately, Payne House ran 230 metres as well, just for good measure. Mm -hmm. uh, Breaking tackles and just constantly taking players with him with post-contact metres. Made 30-odd tackles on the back of that as well. They, they approach this game with the template, I think, close to it with what they're going to bring next week. Yeah. We'll talk about it in the preview, but... Uh, uh, and that's exciting to see because we're going to get the grand final that... We're going to get probably the best grand final in the four years Penrith have been in one. And everyone was talking about the um, the offloads that they ended up throwing in these games. Like, they threw 15, 16 offloads, which is... Oh, sorry, what was it? Was a, do, 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 23 offloads that they ended up throwing in this game, and it was about 15 in the first half. But that was off the back of just the physicality that they had. Yeah. Being able to bump blokes out of a tackle and having their hands free. Like, they won't be going in expecting to throw all these offloads against Penrith. No. If they get the opportunity, obviously, they'll give it a go. But it's just being able to... When you're that dominant through the middle of the field, you're able to separate your tackler away from your arms and get the ball away. So it was and just more about their quick... They were trying to generate quick play the balls. Yeah. And off the back of that came and offloads. And Penrith... Uh, so. This might sound weird. Penrith are a little bit offload proof in the fact they don't get sucked out of the line. They a lot. stick and they yeah, hit and stick a lot better yeah. than most. Yeah. Whereas you, your lower teams are there's when you've got Normally four blocks already on pain, then there's yeah. a lot of space everywhere else. But yeah. uh, anyway, we'll talk about it soon. Um, watching this Warriors team, like I, I got to half time and they limped there, and I, it, I was just thinking, I was like, they've got RTS next year, yes. So things are going to be better. There's, yep. there's an upward trajectory. They've got a bit of... And, and those centres are always the red flags. They've mm -hmm. had good enough years. They've scored plenty of points. But they're not... RTS. They're not <laughs> RTS. I know well, they're not, in, they're not in the class of the Crichton, Stags, Farmworth. Tango, Farmworth, Stags. RTS is. Mm -hmm. So, and yes, like I said, he's, he's 32 or whatever he is now, but he's going to... I assume he's going to come into play centre. Make most you sense. You think so, yeah. Uh, and with the year having been there, done it, I think they're going to be a force we reckon with next year. So I think there's up. But they could also become the Cowboys of next year quite easily. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, they have all the same markings as that. So uh, we'll wait and see, obviously. And we've got plenty of reviews and previews to go on the bridge for them. But that was, <laughs> that was my thinking sort of through this game that they'll be better next year for this run. Yeah, well, the... You got every inch out of them, realistically. You know, every drop of fuel out of them to get to where they got to this year. Um, another full pre-season with the same, well, very similar squad, you would imagine. And no World Cup to Hopefully bust be, open. Yeah. Um, like, you're not going to have Torhu and Co. coming off a World Cup. Yep. Uh, you're not going to have... You know, but that's it, Torhu's now going to be 30. Obviously, six, it's, seven, it's seven, a lot of it's always about older. suspensions and injuries and, and who yeah. you can keep on the field but at the back end of the season, but... Expect them to still be quite competitive at the back end of next year, if not better than what they were this year. Yeah. Um, I thought Chance had a very good game, mm -hmm. as did uh, Ford and Barnett. They worked really hard. Um, Torhu was easily their best forward, as I mentioned. He was busted pretty much from kickoff and just kept on coming. And Dallin had a brilliant game to add to his yeah. brilliant season. 
how you said yeah, he's been remarkable this year from where he came from uh, in previous years. Peliasia, Ricky, Kate will all were good. Um, their halves all both had really good contributions in this game. And as did Cobbo, I thought he was very good as well. Uh, just throw in a million of them. Carrigan and Walsh were awesome. And Hass, Walters and Farnworth were brilliant. Like they, those five blokes, they any one of them could have been close to close enough to man of the match. I think I'm gonna go Reese Walsh. Mm-hmm. Payne House, Billy Walters. Yep. But I want I want party wants to give a point to Torhu. Uh, but that he get beat by thirty. And and then but the other cases I'm sure you'll make I, I respect as well. What do you think? Man? Yeah, I had a Haas as the man of the match. I just thought that he was the one who laid the foundations early. Without him, Walsh doesn't get the kind of yep. space that he got at the back end of and it. And the narrative in this game was beating the Warriors forward pack. Yes. And he beat the Warriors forward pack. And then I had so, Walsh so. because obviously he was the man that created yep. pretty much everything off the back of that. And I couldn't split Farmworth and Walters. Uh, Walters probably did it when it was more important at the start end of the game. So probably he would be getting the one. But um, just the fact that Farnworth was just a constant threat and easily the best of their, yeah. or apart from Walsh, easily of their outside Give it to Walters. Okay, we'll, go ha- we'll go House, Walsh, Walters. Yep. And uh, what a grand final we're going to preview in the next show.